Hey guys, good afternoon. Today in the Vinci Speed Garage we're going to be working on our 66 Mustang project. We're finishing up the details on prepping the motor, getting that ready to bolt onto our transmission and slam this sucker home. So today what I've got to work on is getting our timing cover bolted into place, getting our intake manifold bolted into place, and primarily cleaning up all of the gasket surfaces so our new gaskets will stick uh, and seal against a good clean metal surface and won't leak on us. Uh, our motor here has been coated with a nice heavy epoxy paint which is great but they painted all the gasket surfaces so we've got to, we've got to spend some quality time here with the die grinder that's my preferred method for this and strip all of that paint, all of that heavy epoxy paint off of all of our sealing surfaces. We've got to do the front of the engine block where the timing cover is going to bolt on. We've got to do the exhaust manifold surfaces where our manifold gaskets are going to sit and we've got a little bit of cleanup to do in the intake valley uh, before setting our intake manifold into place. It's not bad. Uh, I don't mind the fact so much that they painted those surfaces but it does require a little bit of extra work to clean that up and prep it for assembly. On our timing cover here I went through and took a couple different types of grinders, a straight headed grinder and a 90 degree die grinder and uh, just kind of cleaned up all, all of the sharp edges. Um, knocked all of the casting flash off of our ports and uh, just went over all the surfaces to make sure we have nice flat even surfaces. And I know that sounds like a contradiction because a lot of guys will tell you don't use one of these to clean uh, particularly uh, aluminum surfaces because it's very easy to go too heavy with the grinder and actually remove aluminum or possibly steel if you're really really going at it with one of these wheels um, from the base material and you don't want to do that you want to have a nice soft easy hand and uh, and not uh, cut it cut into it with the scotch brite pads so it is easy to do it's uh, it's easy to lean on it a little too much use the corners and and um, create some low spots and take off too much material and that's not what my purpose here was today so I was very careful to just um, use use the pad at a little bit of an angle but just to uh, knock off knock off the casting flash clean out these bores you know it's not we're not porting and polishing a cylinder head here we're just trying to clean up our timing cover uh, knock off any high spots from casting and make it fit and seal properly the first time so we don't have to go back through and do this all again so I used a couple different types of pads um, these are these are Rolox uh, which are a 3M branded type product um, and it's a scotch Bright pad fits onto the bottom of your air grinder here under one of these adapters and uh, they're really great to use they're super convenient and uh, with the 90 degree head you can get into those tight nooks and crannies so that's what I'm going to be using today on our long block here um, to prep all of our surfaces out and I'm going to start with a red scotch Bright pad which is a little more aggressive and um, and I'm going to use a combination of red and green scotch Bright pads here to uh, to strip and prep those surfaces because the block is made out of cast iron in this case it's not a aluminum LS or coyote motor there's less of a chance of nicking a ceiling surface and putting a low spot in it so I'm not too worried about that but uh, I'm not going to be overly aggressive stripping off this epoxy paint uh, the reason I went ahead and, and went through and cleaned up all of these edges um, on our timing cover here was to prevent any of that casting flash from vibrating, cracking, and breaking loose into our motor. We don't want to plug up our radiator with a bunch of aluminum crap floating around in the cooling system and likewise we don't want anything uh, falling down into the bottom here into our oil pan. So uh, I thought it was just wise to go through, use some cartridge rolls, get inside all of these ports and just clean it up. I wasn't trying to, uh, like I said, I wasn't porting and polishing our timing cover here, but um, just go over it and uh, give it a nice finish before uh, before bolting all your new gaskets in place. The front timing cover seal here that goes around our crankshaft, I'll be installing that after I prep the front of the block, get it ready to accept the timing cover. I'll pop the seal in, throw the timing cover on there, and then we can move on to working on the intake valley. So enough talking about it, I'm going to get to work.
And I found that as I started prepping out just this oil filter surface with the Scotch Brite just to clean it up, and I noticed there's a big old run right here. So, you know, if if, if I had just stuck an oil filter on here and not prepped this surface out, that definitely would have been a leak. You know, maybe not right away, but as soon as that uh, rubber gasket shrunk up a little bit on our filter, uh, we would have we would have been leaking oil there. So I went ahead and slammed our timing cover into place in our water pump. And the reason I put the water pump on was to hold our gaskets in place. I used some RTV silicone. Uh, unlike Kevin, he likes the Forma gasket. I like RTV. So I used a nice thin bead of RTV around everything, especially around the water pumps, uh, water pump ports uh, on the engine block because this block is a remanufactured block and there was a little bit of corrosion there. So I just wanted to make sure, and it had been cleaned up, uh, and the block had been prepped and cleaned up and painted and everything, but there was still some pitting around the uh, around the water jackets there. So I like to use a little bit of RTV, threw my gaskets into place, and bolted the water pump on so everything would be securely held in place while that RTV sets up. Somebody really cranked the hell out of the clamping bolt on the engine stand here. And word to the wise, don't let your buddies crank the hell out of the clamp bolt on your engine stand. Alright, now that we're back right side up here on the bottom of our small block motor, uh, there's a little bit of prep work that needs to be done. I've got to clean all the surfaces here. There's just a little bit of paint on the oil pan gasket surfaces and a little bit of sealant from uh, the guys that put our long block together here for us. So I've got to clean that up, get our rubber seals front and back. One goes in the front of the timing cover, one goes in the last bearing cap uh, at the flywheel end of our long block. I get our rubber seals in, make sure our gasket surfaces are nice and flat. And uh, the way this timing cover fits, it's not a perfect fit here at the front edge of our motor. So I might try to realign that a little bit. Um, and if I can't get it perfectly flush, then uh, we could possibly get an oil leak there. So I'm going to try and file that down a little bit and get us a good transition between the uh, engine block and the aluminum timing cover. We've also got to install our oil pump and our oil pump pickup into the bottom here before throwing the pan on. And before I close this thing up, while I've got the opportunity, I'm going to get my uh, oil can, my little hand pump oil can, and shoot a little oil into the back sides of these pistons. Um, so that the wrist pins are well oiled and the back sides of the pistons can uh, let some of that oil into the rings uh, from the bottom side and then once we get a flip back up right side around before I put the plugs in I'll also shoot a little WD-40 inside there or maybe some oil uh, into each cylinder bore just to uh, give it a little bit of extra lubrication so that when I turn it over by hand we're not uh, running it dry. So here on the front of our timing cover you can see how these gaskets uh, fit when lined up with their bolt holes. Um, you can see there's just a little bit of material there between our oil pan seal here on the front of our oil pan and our gasket for the oil pan on the timing cover. So this is going to get a little RTV down in this corner on both sides front and back and uh, our oil pan seal on the front here needs has been trimmed to fit down tightly against our cork gasket okay and we're going to have RTV in here to kind of tie those all these three pieces here together and we'll do the same on on this side so these two corners in the front on the timing cover and these two corners on the back on our rear bearing cap um, are going to get a little extra love Guys, we ran into a little bit of a snag here on reassembling our small block. Um, the oil pan that I ordered is the wrong oil pan for our year of uh, long block here. So our rear seal at the flywheel doesn't quite fit. Everything else fits great. Front, front seal is great. All the pan bolt holes line up except the back two here and our rear seal. So when I dry fit this and put everything together just to check the pan and make sure it was going to fit before I painted it. Um, I guess I didn't check the rear seal. Well, I ordered a new pan. It's on the way. 
So uh, once the new pan gets here, I'm going to paint it, put it back on here, we'll be good to go. Uh, but I'm going to continue getting the uh, long block here back together, get all, get all of our components on. And uh, when the new pan comes, I'll just assemble it from underneath. Uh, unfortunately, that means our long blocks could be sitting on the stand a little longer than I would like. Uh, I wanted to try and slam this baby home tomorrow, but it um, doesn't look like that's going to happen. But we can assemble everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and anti-seize all of our bolts for the oil pan, put them in so I don't lose them, and uh, just loosely run them down. Uh, I'm also going to slam our fuel pump into place here on our timing cover. So first things first, uh, let's get these pan bolts in. When you're working with this uh, with anti-seize, uh, get some rubber gloves. Get used to wearing rubber gloves with this kind of stuff. Anti-seize is one of those one of those uh, lubricants that once you touch it, it gets everywhere, and before you know it, you'll have it uh, in your ears and in your hair. and whatnot around the pan I'm gonna go ahead and run it down and leave it on here and it'll also keep our motor sealed up so we don't uh, mostly seal that so we get less dirt and dust inside of it and now we can install our mechanical fuel pump here in the side of our timing cover the way these mechanical fuel pumps work is they draw fuel in on the inlet and push flow push fuel out the outlet to your carburetor uh, they're driven by an eccentric on the camshaft. And what an eccentric is is an ob, off-centered, uh, like a bushing, that rotates on the end of the camshaft out of round or out of concentric. And uh, it'll push down on the lever of our fuel pump here. And that way it mechanically cycles the diaphragm, pumps the fuel up to our carburetor. No real gotchas here other than make sure that the smooth part of the lever arm on your fuel pump is against the eccentric. You don't want to run it, install it backwards and put the open end of your lever arm uh, against the eccentric. Won't pump fuel that way. Make sure your gasket's in place, of course. And depending on where the uh, motor is at timing-wise and where the camshaft is positioned currently, you may have to uh, push it down into position and cycle that, cycle the pump a little bit in order to get your bolts started. Anti-seize the bolts of course because they're going into our aluminum timing cover. Oh, that one's full of dirt. You know, when they prep these blocks, they, uh, they give them a good external cleaning, and I'm sure they do as good of an internal cleaning as they can, but they don't get all the corrosion out of the water jackets, which is unfortunate. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a little RTV around the water jackets on our cylinder heads, drop our intake gaskets into place, put our front and rear RTV seals in place, um, do the same on the water jackets on the outside of the gaskets, and then we can drop the intake into place, put our bolts in place, and we'll be good to go. I've already got our stainless hardware uh, lubed up with some anti-seize ready to go in, so let's uh get to work silicone here or rtv around these water jackets is just a precaution just a little extra insurance that we don't get water leaks into our oil pan and then i'm just putting a little extra here to help hold these Gas gets in place while all the intake manifold gets dropped on. I had to throw some gloves on, not to avoid the mess, but it's because the intake was so hot from sitting here in the sun for a couple hours. 
is literally burning my fingers. Well guys, we got our little small block much more together here, just about ready to make some noise. We've got to rebuild that carburetor, which we're going to do this week. We've got to stab the distributor in it. Uh, I've got a nice new thermostat housing and thermostat to go on there. Uh, and button up all of the accessories. So we're getting very close to dropping this back into, uh, into our 66 Mustang project here. I do have to wait for the new oil pan to get here so I can paint that and get that bolted on bolt the uh, completed motor to our transmission here that's been freshened up and slam it home. So that's what we'll be doing next week. Uh, I wanted to be doing that today, but unfortunately that oil pan is pushing me back waiting on shipping. That's my own fault. I ordered the wrong pan. So sometimes that happens. you got to roll with the punches. But when it takes five days to order something, it uh, can be a real setback. Uh, you saw me use my favorite stuff today, lots of anti-seize, a little bit of RTV and some red Loctite where applicable uh, on our hardware. One of the things that I didn't do when I got this new long block that I should have done and what you guys need to do before you put together your new motor is chase all your threads out. Chase out all your bolt threads. Make sure that uh, when you go to put your components on your motor everything's going to drop into place and thread in nicely i had one bolt on our intake that i had to chase the threads out of which means i can't could have potentially dropped some carbon or some rust scale or some other crap down into our intake valley and unfortunately there's really no way for me to address that so we're just going to have to flush the motor out maybe do an extra oil change and hope that anything that came loose from those bolt threads uh, on that one intake bolt uh, will get flushed out in the wash. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but it is something I'm a little concerned about, and I wish I had chased all of those threads before dropping that intake into place. Uh, you saw me do some work on the R intake today. I had to fix uh, the water neck threads that uh, attach our old water neck here that was rusted and completely destroyed into our intake manifold, into our thermostat inlet, on the uh, intake manifold. The, uh, the old water neck snapped clean off flush on the top of the intake manifold and I wasn't able to extract the broken piece so I had to drill it and um, I didn't really want to do that because I was afraid I would damage the threads beyond repair and I'd have to drill it oversize and screw up a perfectly good 289 Ford original intake manifold which I don't really like doing so um, fortunately, I was able to chuck it up there on my home milling machine drill press, uh, shade tree milling machine I should say, and I was able to drill out the uh, internals of our uh, water neck and get, get all the way down to where I was just seeing threads, run my uh, 3 8 MPT tap through there and clean out uh, the remaining pieces of water neck that were stuck in our threads. I had to run it a little deeper than the original threads probably were, uh, but that's no big deal. When I get the new water neck in, I will just put one extra wrap of, uh, of Teflon tape on it before I tighten it up and we should be okay there. I'm also going to replace at the same time the water temp sensor uh, as well. So yeah guys, good progress here on our 66 Mustang project. Motor's just this close to slam back in there so we can make some noise with it and uh, piss off all the neighbors with the open headers and uh, see how this baby sounds uh, after 30 years of not running. So if you like the video guys please give me a like. Uh, if you're new please click subscribe. We've got a lot more stuff coming up on the 66 Mustang project. We've got a lot more work probably on my 7.3 here unless I get that baby sold. We'll see. And Parker's 71 Bumpside project is about to go under the knife so you don't want to miss that. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching.